reduction formulas. Um, you may have noticed in doing the exercise with some of them, certainly integrals of trig integrals with high powers, things like that, as you're doing them, you have to do a process sometimes more than once. You're doing the same thing. So it lends itself to a formula, which we call a, a reduction formula. Sometimes you hear it called a recurrence formula. But the idea is this. It can be used whenever your integrand is raised to some power. And integration by parts is by far the most common way of doing it. But that does not mean that it's always going to be done that way. Uh, but it would probably be the first technique I'd be looking for because a lot of them are done by parts. So let's use this as an example here. Uh, so we're going to find the integral of 1 to e of x log x cubed dx. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting you would do it this way, um, but I'm going to create a formula so I could find x log x to any power I like. Okay? Normally in a test, it would be the other way around. They'd probably say, hey, go and create this formula, and then the next part would be, okay, now go and work out this. So let's say we're going to work out that formula. And I'll do it by parts. Uh, differentiation, of course, will reduce the power of n. That'll get it down. So a lot of times that'll be what we'll choose for the u, plus also we can't integrate the log x to the power of n. There's another good reason for it to be the u. And we get n log x to the n minus 1 over x, which means the v is x dx, and so v is a half x squared. So uv minus the integral of v du. Now, if you have a look at the integral, it's still x log x to the power of something. So it's still the same integral, but the power has been reduced. And the brackets we can work out, we're going from 1 to e. So 1 to e, that works out to be e squared on 2. I don't now go and work out that integral, because what I say is, well, hang on, that would just be i n minus 1. If I've defined i n to be to the power of n, then i n minus 1 must be to the power of n minus 1. That becomes my formula, right there. I want to work out i3 then. So i3, using that formula, if I sub in, I'll get e squared on 2 minus 3 on 2, i2. But then I can use that formula to work out i2. So i2 would be e squared on 2 minus i1. Now i1, I could use the formula again. And I get e squared on 2 minus a half i0. But what's great about i0, remember it was log x to the power of something? Well, now it's to the power of 0. That's always 1. That log x has now disappeared altogether. So 3 quarters i0, i0 is simply the integral of x dx. Of course, we have a much nicer thing to integrate there. Um, so x squared over 2, subbing in e, subbing in 1. There we go, there's our answer. Although I can tidy that up a little bit. I don't know why I didn't put it all over 8 and why I wrote it as two fractions, but it doesn't really matter, I suppose. e squared on 8 plus 3 eighths. So that's a way of doing it, working out when you sort of work your way down. You start at I3 and work your way down. Some people like to go the other way. Some people like to start at I0 and work their way up to I3. So they go, well, look, I0, they work that out first. That's a half E squared minus 1. They then say, well, I1 would be E squared on 2 minus a half I0. So then substituting in their answer for I0. Uh, so now they've got I1. Then they'll work out I2, substituting in their answer for I1. And then finally they can get to I3 and come up with the answer. I guess it's just a matter of preference which way you prefer to go. Start at the bottom, work your way up, or start at the top and work your way down. All right, so what I'm saying is integration by parts is the commonest... Is that a word, by the way? Have I just made up a word there? Is the commonest way... <laughs> <laughs> of getting reduction formula. Uh, it's not the only one though. Trig identity. You remember the tan and cotan is the same, but I use the same technique every single time with tan. So I'm not going to bother with integration for parts for this one. I'll just use the technique we know for tan and cotan. Now, I n is the integral of cotan to the power of n. 
So integral of cotan to the power of m, well what did we do for tan and consequently cotan? We factorise out the, well in tan it was tan squared, so we'll factorise out cot squared. And then we change cot squared to cosec squared minus 1. We break that up into two integrals. Now the left hand integral we can do via a substitution. Look at the right hand integral, it's now just cot to, we've actually reduced the power by 2 in this case. So the one on the left hand side, I can say, well u is cot x, so du would be minus cosec squared. I get minus u to the n minus 2 du. The cot to the n minus 2 is now i n minus 2. Uh, u to the n minus 2, add 1 to the power over the power, sub the u back in. There's my formula for i n. So 1 on n minus 1, cot the n minus 1 x minus i n minus 2. They want us to work out i 6. Okay. Oh, before I work out i 6. Another way of doing it, especially with trig, this sometimes works. You'll find that if we're reducing by 2, that we're, and we're not going to use parts, and in this case we don't use parts, we could try actually something else by adding or subtracting i n with i n plus 2. And sometimes it drops nicely. Watch what happens with this one. So if I said i n plus i n plus 2, I'd go, oh well that's cot to the n plus cot to the n plus 2. Add those together. It has a common factor of cot to the n. But then 1 plus cot squared is cosec squared. And so I know I just add 1 to the power over the power because I've got derivative times the function, or in this case negative times, because uh, it would be negative cosec squared would be the derivative. And then I can rearrange that and come up with the same formula. Doesn't work every single time, but uh, the sort of ones you're looking for is those trig ones, plus or minus, you might pick the wrong one to start off with. It's just an alternative way of looking at it. Alright, let's work out our i6. Cot to the 6 is i6 subbing into our formula, minus the fifth cot 5 minus i4, i4, apply the formula again, a third cot cubed plus i2 now, now we use the formula again, i2, we keep using our reduction formula until we get to either 0 or 1, can't go into the negatives, so i0 in this case, uh, but again that's just cot to the power of 0, which is 1, so it's just the integral of dx, which is x. It's certainly a lot quicker than having to do the technique again and again and again and again as those powers are going down. We're simply substituting into a, a formula. Okay, sometimes integration by parts. Not enough by itself. Algebraic manipulation. I n is the integral of 1 plus x squared to the power of n. Find a formula connecting, so giving us a bit of a hint, i n with i n minus 1. So 1 plus x squared to the power of n. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do it by parts. 1 plus x squared to the power of n is u. So there's du. dv becomes dx. So v is x. So I get uv minus the integral of v du. Now this is where I use my algebraic manipulation. At this stage I've got x squared times 1 plus x squared to the power of n minus 1, but I'm going to rewrite that. That x squared I'm going to rewrite as 1 plus x squared minus 1. Because now I can split it into two integrals. One of the integrals will be 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x squared to the n minus 1. I get 1 plus x squared to the power of n, which is i n. The other one is minus 1 times 1 plus x squared to the n minus 1. So that's i n minus 1. Now all I've got to do is make i n the subject of this formula. So I've got minus 2 n i n on the right hand side. If I move that to the left, I've got 2 n plus 1 i n. Divide both sides by 2 n plus 1 and I have a formula. So what you have for those algebraic manipulation ones, if you see like x squared or one of the terms there and all that differs is a number, then hey, hang on a sec, I might be able to do an algebraic manipulation or something. So i n is equal to the integral of cosine to the power of n. 
He that have given me the formula. Those questions are nice because if for some reason you can't come up with the formula, usually there's now a second part and you can see it says, hence evaluate cos 5. At least you can show them you know how to use the formula and, and pick up a mark that way. So, okay, I n is cos to the power of n. So we've got to think about cos. How did we do cos? Well, it, it depended whether it was odd or even. Now, I've got no idea whether it's odd or even here. So uh, I'm just going to factorise out the cos and then do it by parts. I'm pretty sure that's how I did it, is it? So u is cos n minus 1. The u is n minus 2. The v cos x. So v becomes sin x. Now, why did I split it up n minus 1 and not just go straight with the n? I suppose because of the formula, it had an n minus 2. And I thought, how am I going to get to n minus 2? Well, if I differentiate n, I'm going to get to n minus 1. Whereas if I differentiate n minus 1, I'll get to n minus 2. So I thought I'll try that. I'll split it up. Cos to the power of n minus 1, cos to the power of 1. So I've got my n minus 2. Let's see what happens. Uv... Oh, that's nice. Look at the limits. 0 to pi on 2. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so that disappears. And cos of pi on 2 is 0 as well. So the square brackets, bang, that's all equal to 0. I'm just left with my integral here. What have we got? Cos n minus 2 times sine squared. Ah, but I can rewrite the sine squared as 1 minus cos squared. And then split that into two integrals. One is cos to the power of n minus 2, which would be i n minus 2. And the other is cos to the power of n, which would be i n. All right, we need to make i n the subject of the formula. So I'll move my n minus 1 i n to the other side. I get n lots of i n. Divide by n. And we have the formula that they wanted. Okay, here's another one of those ones. This is what you were saying. If they've given us one where they've actually told us what the answer is, I can play around with what they've given me. So I could play around with i n minus 2 minus i n. Let's see what happens. And uh, if I do that, i n minus 2, remember, cos to the n minus 2. i n was cos to the power of n. I can uh, factorise and get 1 minus cos squared, which is sine squared. Do a u equals sine x, to use cos x. Do v is cos squared, n minus 2. In we go. And, yes, that's right, isn't it? Yes, u, v, sine x, cos n minus 1. And there it is, 1 on n minus 1, i, n. So I now know that i, n minus 2 minus i, n is i, uh, so 1 on n minus 1 i n, which eventually I could rewrite. All right, we want to work out i5. So that's going to be 4 fifths i3. i3 is 2 thirds i1. i1 is cos to the power of 1. 0 to pi on 2. Well, sine of pi on 2 is just 1. Uh, 8 on 15 is our, our final answer. One a little bit more recent certainly compared to the last one. 2004 question. Um, I, I put this one in here to scare you. There's a good one. So i n is 0 to pi n 4 tan to the power of n. And also they've given this other one. j n is negative 1 to the power of n i 2 n. Show that i n plus i n plus 2 is 1 on n plus 1. So in fact they're telling you, hey, do this by adding the two together. They're giving us a nice hint there. So tan to the power of n plus tan to the power of n plus 2. I can combine those two together, and I've got a common factor of tan to the power of n outside of 1 plus tan squared. 1 plus tan squared is sec squared. I now have uh, the derivative times the function to the power of n. Uh, so u is tan x to u is sec squared change those limits if you want to. u to the power of n to u, or you could have, if you notice it, just gone straight away and said, well, that's tan to the power of n plus 1 on n plus 1. Either way, we come up with our answer 
of 1 on n plus 1. They were the gift marks of the question. <laughs> Deduce that jn minus jn minus 1 is negative 1 to the power of n over 2n minus 1. Okay. They told us jn was negative 1 to the power of n i 2n. So if that's jn and we're going to subtract jn minus 1, negative 1 to the power of n minus 1, i 2n minus 2. We're trying to end up with, well, I suppose the first thing I notice there is the answer I'm looking for has a common factor of minus 1 to the power of n. We've got that in our answer already. Perhaps the first thing I should do is just factorise out the negative 1 to the power of n. Did I? Ah, yes, because you'll notice the, the second one there, I've, I've rewritten the minus times the minus 1 to the n minus 1, so minus 1 to the n, and factorised it out. So now, it's i2n plus i2n minus 2. Okay. Well, we just showed that in was equal to, uh, now, of course, it's not on this page. Let me just go back, remind myself what in was. There it is. in plus in plus 2 is 1 on n plus 1. Okay. We've got i2n plus i2n minus 2. But you'll notice they still differ by 2. n can be anything we like. We can substitute anything we like in for n. But we're saying the two things differ by 2. And that's the situation what we've got here. So n in our situation, now the formula we had was i n plus i n minus 2 or plus 2. It was plus? Okay. So the smaller one is going to be the n. So the smaller one is 2n minus 2. So 2n minus 2 is where I'm going to substitute into our formula for n. We had 1 over n plus 1. So I'm going to have 1 over 2n minus 2 plus 1. So let n equal 2n minus 2. And it comes out. There it is. Now we're going to show that j m is pi on 4 plus the sum from 1 to m of minus 1 to the n, n on 2n minus 1. Okay. So I'm moving the, the j m. So j m will equal minus 1 to the m on 2m minus 1 plus jm minus 1. But jm minus 1, substitute in, and it will reduce by 1. It will become jm minus 2. And so on, and so on, and so on. Till eventually, we'll get to j naught. So eventually, we'll get to j naught. That's where the sum's coming in. Because have a look at each of those fractions. I've got minus 1 to the power of m over 2m minus 1, and we're going down, we're going down, we're going down. So that's how n equals 1 to m of negative 1 to the n of 2n minus 1. j naught, I hope, will turn out to be pi on 4. So j naught is the integral of dx from naught to pi on 4. And sure enough, that is pi on 4. Okay, what a great question. But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> now, we're going to use the substitution u equals tan x. We're going to go back to the i n to show that's u to the n on 1 plus u squared du. Okay. i n was the integral of tan to the power of n. They've told me u equals tan x. I'm going to rewrite it. Because trust me, this makes the question a heck of a lot easier if I rewrite this one, because look what happens. x becomes the inverse tan of u. dx is du on 1 plus u squared. And I can just substrate in for dx now. And tan x is u, so tan to the power of n is u to the n. All I've got to do is work out the limits. So when x equals 0, u equals 0 x is pi on 4, u equals 1, bingo, we got it. u to the power of n times du on 1 plus u squared, we have the answer. 
So if you spotted that idea to make X the subject of the substitution, it makes life quite nice. Oh no, it doesn't stop there. Show that. Oh sorry, deduce that. IN is always in between 0 and 1 on N plus 1. And from that we're going to conclude that JN will approach 0 as N approaches infinity. Okay. Now, if we look at this function UN on 1 plus U squared, that's always going to be positive for U's greater than or equal to 0. So it's easy enough to show that IN is always bigger than 0. I mean, you square something, it's got to be positive. Okay. Well, what about the other side? We want to show it's always less than 1 on n plus 1. Well, remember our formula? I n plus I n plus 2 is 1 on n plus 1. So if I move the I n plus 2, but hang on. We just said I n is always positive. So therefore, I've got 1 on n plus 1 minus something positive. That has to make the number smaller. So therefore, IN must be less than 1 on N plus 1. Because I'm always subtracting something. So I've now trapped IN in between 0 and 1 on N plus 1. Right. Now, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 on n plus 1, well that's 0. So therefore as n approaches 0, i n must be 0. Because we're going to trap it between 0 and 0. But remember j n, that's the limit of n approaches 0 minus 1 to the n of i 2 n. But we just said i n will go to 0. So then the limit for JN is also zero. Wow. Okay. Exhausted? <laughs> you can get some nice reduction questions. Uh, Playtime. <laughs>